Today we're talking about the urgent problem of the city. And the way we're gonna think about this is we're gonna start with how we thought of the city historically. The Athenian citizens swore an oath to the city. And among the words in that oath were, we will transmit this city not only not less, but better, more beautiful than how it was transmitted to us. These words mean a great deal at Syracuse University, the home of the first public administration school in the country. Opened in 1928 in its new building, it was really a school about the administration of cities. One reason, of course, was that Syracuse was thought of as a particularly well-administered city, and that's why it was created here. But in the lobby of that building, as it opened in 1928, incised into the walls behind the statue of George Washington, is the Athenian Oath. And as I said, the citizens swore to pass the city on, transmit it in a better state, a more beautiful state, than he or she found it, or it was transmitted to them. The urgent problem I would submit is, if we apply that standard to us, have we ever failed? Look at our cities. City after city in the United States and many around the world, we pass on much worse than we found them. That's certainly the case for Syracuse and many other what I've called failing cities where compared to what they once looked like, they are much less beautiful and they're certainly not as well ordered and they're certainly not as healthy economically or socially as they once were. The notion from the Mayflower Compact that the country, the new nation, would be in the phrase from the Bible as a city set on the hill, the notion of how we would think about American cities, has certainly come into question in terms of what we've been able to deliver. Now, why is this? And the urgent question is both a fact question and an epistemological question in the sense that people will spill facts all over the place, but how strong is the epistemology? What is the knowledge of which they speak? So if we say, what's wrong with the American city? People will say, oh, it's the suburbs. Others will say, it's the absence of mass transit. Others will say, it's high gas prices. Others will say, it's white flight. Others will say, it's offshoring. Our manufacturing base has left. Others will say it's unfair tax advantages in other states. Others will say, hey, wait a minute. The federal government changed the nature of the city. We are, in fact, receiving any number of people in City X or City Y who are political refugees from other places, and our city can't make jobs for these people. Others will say, well, the nature of industry itself was so different that our cities that fail were industrial cities that can't compete. In the city in which we stand, like many, many cities in the United States, the interstate was cut through in the early 1960s. And there are people who think that what's wrong with Syracuse is the interstate goes through the middle of it. But the interstate goes through the middle of almost every city in the United States. And what we're watching when we propose a question like, is that the real problem? Is we find that a number of these facile solutions or facile sets of theories about why cities don't work are in fact wrong. The great sage of Baltimore, H.L. Mencken, said for every problem there's an answer that's simple and wrong. And in fact, I think as we think about cities, we make, in fact, many of our cities worse by thinking we've got the answer. So we create a solution set for the problem that we think we have identified, and it turns out that wasn't the problem at all. You're gonna read a book by Daniel Brook, who's gonna come and talk to us in this course. It's a fantastic new book. It's called The History of Future Cities. Curious title, isn't it? And he makes the case that the four great cities of the future are Mumbai, Shanghai, Dubai, and St. Petersburg. None of them, obviously, cities in the United States. How can this be? America, for well over 100 years, 
at least 150 years, has been the leading economy of the United States. We are the nation that built from scratch beautiful cities. We are the nation that had the beautiful cities movement. Ours was the nation that people came to see, New York and Los Angeles and San Francisco and Chicago, the fastest growing city in the history of the world until Chinese, the Chinese began to build out their cities. How is it that it's been judged that we don't have the cities of the future? This can't be. This is not the patrimony of the United States and this is not what's whispered to us in the vision of the creators of our universities who built places like the Maxwell School where they said it's our responsibility to pass it on better than it was transmitted to us.